history books are full of legends of great warriors and individuals who performed incredible feats of heroism. But even among these extraordinary people, a few names stood out. Hello and welcome to our channel. Today, we're going to tell you about the top 10 ancient warriors. So, without further ado, let us begin. Number 1. Achilles One of Greek mythology's greatest heroes is the warrior Achilles. Achilles was said to be extremely powerful, valiant, and loyal, but he did have one flaw, his Achilles heel. The Iliad, Homer's epic poem, recounts his exploits during the final year of the Trojan War. Achilles, like other mythical heroes, had a tangled familial tree. Peleus, the mortal king of the Myrmidons, a tribe who, according to tradition, were courageous and skillful soldiers, was his father. His mother was an Arade named Thetis. Thetis was extremely anxious about her young son's mortality. According to myths and traditions were written long after the Iliad. She tried all she could do to make him eternal, including roasting him over an open fire every night and dressing his wounds with ambrosial ointment and dunking him into the river Styx, whose waters were thought to grant gods invulnerability. She did, however, clutch his foot so tightly that the water never hit his heel when she dipped him into the river. So Achilles grew up to be a great warrior and proved his mettle during the Trojan War. He won battle after battle and even managed to kill the great Trojan prince Hector. According to legend, he offended the god Apollo during this war. Apollo, in vengeance for the affront, guided an arrow straight into Achilles' heel, which led to the great warrior's demise. Now, if it hadn't been for this one weak spot, do you think anyone could have bested this man in combat? Number 2. Maximus Decimus Meridius During Emperor Marcus Aurelius's campaigns against Germania, Maximus led the Roman legions. In combat, Maximus and his servant Quintus vanquished the barbarians. After the battle, the emperor praised him for his bravery. Marcus's son Commodus, who was a coward, admired him. Marcus granted Maximus the title of Caesar, knowing that Commodus was too feeble to lead Rome. He accepted the position, but Commodus secretly assassinated his father and went on to become emperor. Quintus betrayed him, and he was sentenced to death in the woods. He managed to escape the punishment, but discovered that the emperor had his wife and son brutally murdered. He buried their bodies, after which he passed out from the exertion, only to discover that he was now a slave and was en route to the Colosseum. During the 150 days of games, he continued to beat opponent after opponent, which not only gained him the favor of the crowd, but the respect of the other gladiators as well. In one fight, he had to fight Tigers and Tigris of Gaul, a fearsome fighter. Even in those circumstances, Maximus came out on top. He later got his revenge when he challenged the emperor to a duel and killed him in combat. The people in that time were really made up of different stuff. The only generals we see today are aged men who can barely run a mile. Number 3. Spartacus Spartacus was from Thrace, a region in Southeast Europe that the Romans attempted to conquer frequently in the 1st century BC, according to the historical records. He appears to have served in a Roman auxiliary army for a period of time before deserting and becoming either a robber or a Roman rebel. He was caught at some point, transported to Rome, and sold as a slave to a guy known as Vatia. This guy ran a gladiator school in Capua, around 120 miles southeast of Rome, 193 kilometers. 
Spartacus helped plan an escape at the school, which resulted in more than 70 gladiators fleeing armed with knives, cleavers, and other homemade weapons obtained from the kitchen. This force continued to grow with time until he controlled a force that was nearly 40,000 strong. By this time, the Roman Senate had begun to notice the rebellion and sent two armies to deal with the freed slaves. The Romans saw initial success, but Spartacus's genius prevailed, and he defeated the army sent after him. He continued with this momentum and continued defeating the Roman forces that were sent after him. However, Spartacus met his match in Marcus Crassus, a rich Roman politician who finally put a stop to the slave rebellion. In his final battle, Spartacus is reported to have chopped down two centurions as he tried to get to Crassus, but it was in vain. Spartacus's death is described in several ways, but they all conclude with him being encircled and murdered. When he died, his army disintegrated, and Crassus and the other Roman soldiers went on the hunt for the surviving rebels. So, do you think Spartacus would have been able to take on Maximus? Well, given his youth and experience as a gladiator, we think Maximus would bite the dust at least in single combat. Number 4. Marcus Antonius Marcus Antonius, sometimes known as Mark Anthony in English, was a Roman statesman and commander. He was a significant supporter and close friend of his mother's cousin, Julius Caesar, as a military leader and administrator. Following Caesar's assassination, Antony forged an explicit political partnership with Octavian and Lepidus, dubbed the Second Triumvirate by historians today. While he was nothing compared to Julius Caesar, he was a great general in his own right one who led the Romans to many victories. Antony's military prowess was commanded by Plutarch as well. His capacity to respond positively to adversity was maybe his greatest skill. When he was in a tight spot and backed into a corner, he always managed to find a way out. Antony was one of Rome's strongest generals when his army was decimated by hunger, when he had no friends, and when the going became rough. His men admired him because he treated them as friends and colleagues, rather than faceless soldiers. He was popular among the Romans because he had numerous leadership qualities. But the chink in his armor was his love of Cleopatra, an affair that ended in both of them committing suicide as opposing Roman forces hammered at the gates of Alexandria, Cleopatra's city. Number 5. Yu Fei Yu Fei was born in Tangyin, Jiangzhou, in what is now Henan Province, China. In wars against northern invaders, he was a renowned national hero of the Southern Song Dynasty that reigned from 1127 to 1279. When Zhu Chen invaders from the north assaulted China in the 12th century, General Yu Fei was in charge of the Song army. His effort to advance north and reclaim all of China's lost land was thwarted by a peace-seeking party in the capital, led by Minister Qin Hui, who considered that continuing the war would be too expensive. Qin Hui's side gained greater clout, and Yu Fei was summoned to the Song court and imprisoned in 1141. He was later killed after being falsely accused by Qin Hui. Yu Fei is the subject of a well-known narrative. Out of fury against the marshal, he quit the service and returned home to meet his mother. His mother gave him a serious speech and tattooed the phrase, loyalty to the nation, on his back, which Yu has remembered ever since enabling him to perform tremendous military feats and become a well-known national hero. Yu Fei was exonerated by Song Emperor Gaozong in 1163, and his body was reburied at the current location. 
A memorial temple to Yufei was erected here in 1221 with a statue of him placed within. Number 6. Miltiades Miltiades, from 555 to 489 BC, was an Athenian general who won the Battle of Marathon against the Persians in 490 BC. The Greeks were up against a stronger Persian force headed by commanding Admiral Davis, who had been dispatched by their monarch, Darius I, who reigned from 549 to 486 BC, to attack and conquer Greece. Miltiades knew that the traditional Greek tactics would never prevail against the bigger Persian army in the War of Marathon, so he devised an entirely new plan that shattered the Persian lines, won the battle, and rescued Greece from Persian dominance. Basically, he spread his army in such a way that the center looked weak, so when the Persians focused on this center, the left and right wing of his army was able to envelop and then kill thousands of Persian soldiers. Although he was first lauded as a great hero, the Athenians had a short memory and imprisoned him on treason accusations after he was vanquished and dishonored. In jail, he died of an infection caused by an untreated wound. Later generations would appreciate his brilliance and achievements, and he is now regarded as a national hero. Number 7. Alexander the Great No list of great generals can be complete without mentioning Alexander the Great. He was born on July 20th, 356 BC in Pella, Macedonia's ancient Greek kingdom. Alexander was reared as an aristocratic Macedonian youth as the son of Philip II, King of Macedon. Alexander had placed a great value on learning to read, play the lyra, ride, battle, and hunt. His father had the legendary Aristotle instruct his son as he grew older. His father realized he could no longer adequately test his son's brains and physicality. Alexander and his friends were trained in a variety of subjects by Aristotle, including medicine, philosophy, morals, religion, logic, and art. Many of his classmates would go on to become generals in his army. Alexander succeeded to the throne at the age of 20 after King Philip was killed. Alexander launched his assault against the Persian Empire after quelling small riots and rebellions following his father's death. He crossed into Asia with nearly a hundred thousand warriors and launched a seven-year battle against Persia. Despite having fewer warriors, Alexander exhibited tactical skill in his battle against the Persian army, remaining undefeated. His achievements carried him to the extreme edge of India on the Ganges River's banks. By the time of his death, his empire spanned from the tip of Italy to the Himalayas. We don't think any of the warriors on our list can boast an empire this huge. Number 8. Leonidas of Sparta Perhaps one of the most iconic warriors and commanders in history, Leonidas of Sparta, is known for his heroic stand against the Persian Horde, backed with just over 300 Spartan warriors. Leonidas was both a military and a political leader. Leonidas, like other male Spartans, had been psychologically and physically prepared since boyhood to become a hoplite warrior. During the Second Persian War, Xerxes I launched an attack on the Greek mainland. To reach its destination, the Persian army had to cross the Pass of Thermopylae. But Leonidas established a force of 8,000 to 7,000 men to protect the pass, and for two days, the Greeks continued to push back the Persian advance. However, by the third day, the Greeks were betrayed, and the Persians were told about another route that would allow them to surround their enemy. Many of the Greeks retreated, but Leonidas, along with 300 Spartans, stood their ground and were massacred. The sacrifice motivated the rest of the Greeks to unite and beat back.
back the Persian invasion. Leonidas achieved lasting fame for his sacrifice, and he is often regarded as one of the bravest warriors of the ancient era. Number 9. Julius Caesar Julius Caesar, in full, Gaius Julius Caesar, was born in July 12th or 13th, 100 BC in Rome, and died on March 15th, 44 BC in Rome. He was a celebrated Roman general and statesman, the conqueror of Gaul in the conquest from 58 to 50 BC, victor in the civil war of 49 to 45 BC, and dictator from 46 to 44 BC, who was launching a series of political and social reforms when he was assassinated by a group of nobles in the Senate House on the Ides of March. Caesar dramatically and irrevocably changed the direction of Greco-Roman history. Most of the names of the great figures of Greco-Roman culture have lost their meaning to the ordinary educated modern person. However, Caesar's and Alexander's names are still remembered in Christian and Islamic circles. After all, he is referred to as the uncrowned king. Had it not been for the traitors in his camp, Julius Caesar's impact on our world would have been even greater. Number 10. Alaric the Barbarian Alaric the Barbarian received his training in the Roman army and eventually commanded Gothic warriors fighting with the Romans under Emperor Theodosius. Although Alaric the Barbarian first fought for the Romans after the empire fell apart, he turned against them. From 395 until 410 BC, Alaric the Barbarian controlled the Visigoths, and although being described as a barbarian, he was actually a Christian. He was the first king of the Visigoths and was a deadly and strategic commander who was credited with destroying Rome. He traveled through the Roman Empire into portions of Africa after his triumph in Rome. Despite the fact that Roman forces were unable to thwart the Visigoth king's plans, Mother Nature had other ideas. He had to confess defeat when his ships were wrecked in a storm. So that's all the time we had today, folks. Which of these warriors did you like the most? Let us know in the comments below and do subscribe to our channel to view more of our amazing videos. See you all next time, folks.